recording call the April 1st 2024 City Council meeting for the City of Summersworth to order. Uh, clerk please call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Here. Crimson. Here. Gibson. Here. Parody Catanzaro. Here. Pichot. Here. Witham. Excused. Goodwin. Here. Cameron. Here. Messier. Here. Councillor Goodwin will lead the Council in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the recognition of our indigenous people, our native ancestral Americans. This meeting takes place on Indikina, which is the unceded traditional ancestral homeland of the Abnaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki peoples, past and present. We acknowledge and honor with gratitude the land, waterways, living beings, and the Alnabuk, the people who have stewarded Indikina throughout the generations. Item four on the agenda are uh, scheduled public hearings. We actually have four tonight, so I worked my way through them one at a time. So if you are here for a specific public hearing to speak, please just wait until it is announced and then come on up. So our first uh, public hearing tonight is on Ordinance 9-24, which is the fiscal year 2024-2025 budget for the city of Summersworth. Public hearing is open. Is there anyone here tonight that wishes to speak on Ordinance 9-24, fiscal year 2024-2025 budget for the city of Summersworth. Thank you. When you come up, please state your name and the word in which you live. Hi guys, my name is Carrie Clark, 59 Franklin Street, um, Summersworth School Board at large. Thank you for holding this public hearing. I know it's not easy time. It's, um, you know, no one ever likes this, right? Um, I do I want to say I am here tonight to express my opinion as a mom, um, mostly um, about the proposed education budget. You did say education budget, right? That this uh, was a public hearing. It's for the entirety of the budget. So the oh, whole, perfect. Uh, Whew, school year. Thank yeah. you. Um, uh, yeah, so for purposely is for the proposed education budget um, and its role in providing for basic needs of all Summersworth students. These needs include uh, food and um, safe learning environments along with a well-rounded education. Despite uh, the budgetary constraints, these are indeed crucial factors that are significantly impact the student's ability to learn and thrive. This current proposed budget um, for the next coming year falls short and would not provide the fund necessary in order to provide a quality education. This shortfall is not due to excessive spending. It is simply due to an increase in the cost of the goods and services that we provide to our students. Ensuring that our schools are adequ adequately funded to meet these basic needs is essential for the overall well-being and success of our students. It is shared responsibility that involves not just the education system, but also the community and policymakers. Um, our teachers and staff for years have been creative and have had to cut corners to make things work. Over time, we eventually hit a wall. We can't no longer do that. Um, I urge you to approve the increase of the summer's worth tax cap so that we may continue to provide the same quality care and education that summer's worth students need. Our teachers and staff have been creative. Oh, I said that already. That's part of my note. I didn't erase. But that was my um, note for today. Thank you for taking this time and allowing us to come speak. Thanks. Bye. Thank you so much. Anyone else who would like to speak on Ordinance 9-24, Fiscal Year 2024-2025 Budget for the City of Summersworth? Anybody else? Okay, seeing that there's nobody else, I will close the public hearing on Ordinance uh, 9-24. Uh, next up, I will open the ordinance on, or excuse me, the public hearing on Ordinance 10-24 to amend Chapter 32, Water Ordinance, by amending section 16.1.A titled rates, fees, and charges to increase the water utility rates effective July 1st, 2024 and July 1st, 2025. Public hearing is now open. Anyone else who wishes uh, to speak on ordinance 10-24? All right. Um, I will close the Seeing as there are none, I will close the public hearing on Ordinance 10-24. Next up, I have 
uh, Ordinance 11-24. I will open the uh, public hearing on Ordinance 11-24, which is to amend Chapters 8A, Sewer Ordinance, by amending charges, Article 15, Section 7.B, titled Sewer Use Volume Charges, to increase the sewer volume charges effective July 1st, 2024 and July 1st, 2025. Public hearing is now open. Anyone who wishes to speak on Ordinance 11-24? Anyone for 11-24? Okay, seeing none, we will close the public hearing on Ordinance 11-24. Next up, I will open public hearing on Ordinance 12-24, Supplemental Appropriation for Additional Funding Needed for the Water Meter Replacement Program. Anyone here tonight to speak on Ordinance 12-24? Anyone for Ordinance 12-24? All right, and seeing none, I will close the public hearing on Ordinance 12-24. That concludes public hearings for tonight. So we'll move on to agenda item five, which is comments by visitors. Uh, Summers Rest City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinions and views at council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7-C, time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the council wishes to suspend the rules. I promise tonight to stick to the five minute time limit. I'm sorry, I forgot last meeting. Um, speaker shall not enter into a debate with any person, the mayor, council members, city manager, or department heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight uh, <coughs> for public comment? Yes, please come on up. And again, when you get up here, please state your name and the word in which you live in. Oh, and if, just make sure that that mic has a green light on it. If, if it isn't, just press the button. There we go. Great. Sorry. If you wouldn't mind repeating yourself. Yep. Uh, my name is Matthew Bentley. Um, I'm in Ward 4. Um, I live on uh, Rowland Street. Um, I am here to uh, comment on an idea I have uh, for the current chicken coop policy um, in Summersworth. Um, I know uh, Summersworth is a relatively dense city uh, per capita, and uh, our current chicken coop policy uh, requires 20 feet to the nearest property line uh, for a chicken coop. Um, I would be amiss to say that I don't have a personal stake in this request because uh, the perfect spot on my little humble piece of property is within 12 feet of the property line. Um, but I did a little research, um, and there are other districts um, and towns that um, go down to 10 feet. Um, so I guess my, my request would be if consider updating our chicken coop property line uh, with the nearest property line uh, uh, policy or ordinance to uh, 10 feet. Uh, alternatively, another idea I had was... Um, perhaps amending it to allow uh, between 10 to 20 feet with the written permission of the adjoining property owner. Um, we're on very good terms with our neighbors and it might also, you know, uh, motivate people to be on better terms with their neighbors. Uh, everything else about the policy is awesome. Uh, the chicken coop size, uh, the run size, very humane, uh, very gracious for the chickens. Uh, no roosters, you know, that kind of stuff. Everything else is uh, good. Keep it in the backyard for uh, good property values and stuff, but... I'm an ordinance abiding citizen. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Any other comments by visitors tonight? Any other comments by visitors? All right. Without any, or without seeing any, I'm going to move on uh, to agenda item six, which is approval of the consent calendar. Chair will obtain a motion to approve the consent calendar, which includes the minutes of the State of the City address held on March 18th, 2024, as well as the minutes of the City Council meeting held on March 18th, 2024. Do I have a motion? Yes, Councillor Pepin. All right, Councillor Pepin moves that the consent calendar be approved as presented, seconded by Councillor Parity Catanzaro. Question before the Council is the adoption of the consent calendar. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Okay, eyes appear to have it, eyes have it, consent calendar is adopted. Um, item seven on our agenda is comments by city councilors. Are there any comments tonight? C uh, Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Yes, thank you. Um, and thank you so much for coming out and sharing your idea. Um, I did speak with you uh, a few days ago about this, so I've had some extra time to think about it. I still think it's a wonderful idea, particularly um, allowing for a little bit more flexibility just with the written 
permission of the adjoining neighbors. I think that makes a ton of sense. Um, another good point that you had br brought up was how much Summersworth is getting even more dense, especially where we're um, looking at more affordable housing and accessible dwelling units. Um, I would see no objection to uh, making that change only with the uh, permission to uh, adjoining property owners and would just ask the mayor to perhaps refer this suggestion to whichever committee would make sense to review that update. Say let's refer to recreation to start. I feel like that might be best. Thank you. Great. Oh, um, continued continued comment. Um, and I just wanted to thank uh, Carrie for coming forward and talking about the budget and just add that um, I can't tell which emails I am uh, put on that also include the rest of the council, but I have received a substantial number of comments regarding the budget, particularly the school part of the budget. Um, and many of them go along the same lines. Um, thank you for pointing out that uh, most of the increases for the school part of the budget is just meeting our contractual obligations. We heard that as well in our joint session. So um, we probably won't be discussing this this evening. I don't know, but um, just want to thank you for coming forward and encourage everyone else um, to continue sending us your thoughts on the budget. Thanks. Thank you. I'm going to re-refer to government ops because I feel like recreation, if we were putting them in parks, might make sense, but these are in people's houses. So <laughs> I said it and I was like, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> but Government ops, I think, might be more ideal per recommendation of the city manager. Um, thank you for that. Other comments by counselors tonight? Yes, Councilor Witham. Yes, apologies for being late tonight. I, I promise to catch up and watch the recorded portion online. Um, uh, my wife jokes with me that I watch Channel 22 more than the other channel in the house. Uh, it's probably not a lie. Uh, it's probably true, so I'll catch up with that. Uh, it's baseball season, sort of, uh, so people are moving around games because it's supposed to snow, um, so that's, that's the rumor anyways. So apologies for not being here earlier, but I'll catch up. Thank you. Other comments by counselors? All right. Seeing none, we'll move on to agenda item eight, which is communications. We have none tonight. Agenda item nine is presentations of petitions and disposal thereof by reference or otherwise. We have none tonight. That brings us to agenda item 10, which is the mayor's report. Um, my first item on my report tonight is a quick update for council in regards to the Whale and Warming Center. Uh, pending this storm that Councilor Witham had mentioned, I've been in communication with the other mayors uh, from Dover and Rochester. Uh, we do not yet have confirmation, but we are looking uh, to open the Will Ann Center uh, if uh, Carly's home is willing to help us for these couple days of this uh, nasty storm that we're getting. It would be just for the days of the storm to uh, allow for folks to have safe harbor during what could be a potentially really unsafe time. Um, so again, without objection from the council, uh, once I have confirmation from the other mayors, we'll move forward with that and ensure that uh, that's open. I uh, just wanted to let you know, uh, when I do have full confirmation, I will ask the city manager just to inform everybody, but as of right now, it's kind of in the works. Um, next up, I would like to report out on the mayor's summit that I attended uh, last week at the Manchester Chamber of Commerce. Um, we actually were hosted by the mayor of Manchester, which was great. The summit was a joint meeting between all the mayors in the state of New Hampshire. Uh, we had 12 of the 13. The mayor of Berlin was unfortunately unable, unable to make it that day, uh, but there were 12 of us, which was great. Great opportunity to meet in person, share insights, resources, and ideas about you know many of the problems that we all face um, and all the problems and things that affect the 13 cities. We're kind of unique in that there's only 13 of us uh, while there's hundreds of other towns. And so it was a great chance to kind of get together. Uh, we worked to identify um, many areas of focus that we as a 13 member body would like to work on, uh, which included primarily homelessness, housing and education and education funding. Uh, we identified these areas and found uh, individuals with expertise uh, of our group of 13 uh, who could essentially uh, lead uh, policy discussions and advocacy at a um, breakout committee level. And so we're hoping to gather some committees and create uh, some potential committee groups in the future where we'll work on these issues separately and then bring them back to the larger, broader group to hopefully advocate 
or create policy around. Um, one of the outcomes of this meeting was a joint letter uh, on two education funding bills that we as a group submitted to the House Finance Committee. Uh, this letter encouraged the House Finance Committee to pass House Bills uh, 1583 and 1656 as they were uh, amended and passed by the House of Representatives when they met on February 22nd. House Bill 1583, for those who aren't aware, aims to increase the state's annual uh, base adequacy aid payment from uh, $4,100 to $4,404 per pupil, uh, which would result in about $34 million of increase in state funding to municipalities and assist in um, the education of our students. This bill also included about uh, $39 million in fiscal capacity disparity aid, which would direct more funding to communities with low property values, uh, as well as $25 million of additional funds for communities with high proportions of students eligible for free and reduced meals. Um, uh, when it was passed uh, by the House of Representatives in February, uh, the way that it was amended, which is what we supported, would actually provide the city of Summersworth with over a million dollars in additional funding next year if it's approved as it is by the Senate and then the governor. Um, the second bill, House Bill 1656, as amended, uh, aims to increase total spending on special education differentiated aid by about $35 million. Uh, it would actually direct funds to, uh, to schools schools that have students with the greatest needs. So it actually creates like a differentiated aid program. So students with the most significant needs uh, would actually be, uh, the districts would be awarded a larger piece of funding. Those with moderate needs would be awarded a moderately sized increase in funding. And then uh, students with uh, needs that don't require additional extra spending and supports would re receive about the normal uh, special education adequacy aid uh, that currently is being provided. Um, we felt like this would allow uh, districts to better provide services and would help mitigate uh, spending gaps, or uh, I should say allocation gaps with between years when students with significant needs move into communities and would also just help provide services to these students in a better way. So we supported both of those bills. Uh, unfortunately, the House Finance Committee is reviewing a number of amendments to these bills. Uh, some which would drastically alter or weaken the amount of funding that's provided, and one, in fact, which would include a state mandated spending cap on school districts that would stifle educational opportunities and put a stranglehold on our school districts and school boards. Uh, we as mayors certainly do not support those amendments, uh, and we felt it was necessary to advocate for the version of the bill that not only had the most broad support when it passed the House, it was a bipartisan effort to get it through the House, uh, but also had the most uh, benefits for communities like our own. Um, as the architect of this letter, I was very pleased that we were able to secure signatures of 11 of the 13 mayors, um, and it was sent to the House Finance Committee as part of their public testimony during March, uh, their March 26th hearing. Um, also at this summit, uh, we determined uh, that we'll have uh, these summit events quarterly and the Tri-Cities, uh, Dover, Rochester, and myself stepped up to host our next event uh, in the summer. So this meeting will be a longer version. Uh, the one we had uh, last week was only about an hour and a half. We're hoping to do about four hours where we tour the three cities and see all the offerings uh, between the three of us. So quite excited to host uh, coming soon. So more information soon on that. Um, I'd also like to extend tonight a heartfelt congratulations to Public Works employee Paul Bohan, uh, who retired last week after 35 years the Public Works Department. Uh, I was really thankful to get to attend, even though it was on my lunch break from school, <laughs> so it was very brief, but I got to go uh, and actually uh, to his retirement party last Friday and deliver a proclamation celebrating his many accomplishments and his time and tenure with the city. Uh, thank you so much, Paul, for everything you've done for this city. Uh, it's amazing uh, to think of the various hats you wore in your time in your 35 years, and I certainly hope uh, retirement treats you well, though I, we will all miss you. I am sure many of us, including myself, will still see you, you know, sitting out uh, outside in your chair, and I'll certainly be stopping by to talk about city stuff and gardening and all that. So um, I see you every year when I walk around. So sure, I'll see you soon. But yes, thank you and congrats. Um, and then uh, my last item is I just wanted to thank the Summers Earth Police Department, our fire department, as well as Seward's Ambulance for their food drive this Saturday at Market Basket. 
uh, stopped by to make a donation and heard that they had made multiple, multiple trips to uh, various food parent pantries around the region, filling up a number of them. Uh, so thank you so, so much for your community effort. I cannot say how proud I am of this type of outreach and assistance for our community. So thank you so much. Uh, and with gratitude, I respectfully conclude my mayor's report for March 18th, 2024. Your Honor. Yes. If I may ask a question. Sure. To, it's uh, actually, uh, it's in regards, and I've read a lot of stuff about the warming shelter yeah. uh, and stuff. And I know the budget that between the three cities. Um, but my question is this, and I, I just know if anybody in the council knows it. And I, I haven't come across it, and maybe I just missed it. Um, is there a set amount of times that the warming shelter has to open for the money so to speak not that i'm aware of uh it might so if it's a look into this but i think it's based on uh weather criteria not n amount of yeah. time okay yeah. because i was wondering because it's like well you know if they had only open 10 times then they could probably open more times in times of like snow and so forth or whatever thank you for that you're welcome yes council gibson um this opening will actually be outside the window of the contract. Correct. Okay. Um, will their personnel be getting reimbursed by the cities? Yep. Uh, likely, and again, I don't have confirmation of this, so I don't want to speak out of turn, but I've communicated with the county, and I'm hoping that we can get the county to fund it. I don't have confirmation. If it does come from us, certainly... I uh, would come out of money that we have already allocated towards this, not additional funds. Uh, we have already committed $15,000 that we have paid for within the budget that we currently have. Um, it would not be an additional expense. I hope that clarifies. Yes, thank okay. you. Yeah. Welcome. Other questions about the warming center I, since it's open to discussion at this point? Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, Next on the agenda is item 11, reports of standing committees. We first up have our finance committee, uh, Chairman Witham. Uh, no report from finance tonight. Thank you. Next up is government operations committee, Chairman Mishu. Yeah, we have not met your honor, but I have a feeling you'll have us meeting soon. <laughs> yes, with that on your agenda now. You almost got away with it when I sent to the recreation, but. <laughs> uh, next up, economic development committee, Chairman Goodwin. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, economic development met uh, prior to the meeting this evening, um, and there was just one agenda item, which was the review of 200 Main Street LLC's application for Chapter 31, which is the uh, Community Revitalization Tax Release Relief Incentive, um, which was uh, approved to come before Council. So we will be seeing that 79E application soon. That's it. Thank you. Next up, Public Safety Committee, Chairman Pepin. Sorry. I have nothing to report this evening. Thank you. Uh, next up, Public Works and the Environment Committee, Chairman Willem. Yes, thank you. Public Works and Environment Committee met on March 26th here in City Hall. Um, all members were in attendance. Uh, a number of city staff and two guests, the uh, future owners of the National Guard Readiness Center on Blackwater Road, Ken Scarpetti and Doug Anderson. Um, uh, they were in attendance for the first agenda item. Uh, there is currently a road that enters off of Blackwater Road across from Crest. Uh, it's a short paved section that would access the parking lot for the Little League baseball field. It then turns to gravel and sort of meanders up in what used to be St. Lawrence Park and exits out uh, uh, beside the fire station uh, onto Maple Street. Uh, a good portion of that roadway up until it becomes Parkview Terrace, which is the road that goes out beside the fire station, is uh, best known as a paper road. It exists on, uh, on maps, but it isn't really an identified road per se. Um, that roadway, if you will, a good portion of it uh, likely is within the property of the National Guard Readiness Center um, and uh, if not, uh, could be potentially part of uh, or along the edge of what is the Superfund site. It's sort of this who owns it nebulous area. But uh, at the end of the day, the committee was very comfortable with uh, that piece of property becoming part of the development of the National Guard site. According to the potential developers, uh, at this point in time, 
Uh, they are planning to raise all of the buildings on that property. Uh, they have done extensive uh, work looking at the, the buildings there uh, to reuse them as part of their uh, townhouse concept, and it just doesn't work. It's just financially not feasible to do that. Uh, they are looking to increase the number of townhomes on the property, I believe, from 24 to 30. Uh, and uh, if you think about that road off of Blackwater Road, they envision that coming in uh, almost until where you get to the Little League parking lot and then looping around and then coming back out on Blackwater Road closer down towards the intersection with Maple Street. So sort of like a, a private drive, if you will, for their development. Um, the committee had no heartburn with the increase in the number of units. The committee had no heartburn with them needing to raise the buildings on that property uh, or with the discontinuance of this road, uh, provided that there were appropriate easements in place so that you could still access the Little League Field parking lot. Uh, there's also a 10-inch water line that goes cross-country from just in front of the fire station, uh, runs parallel to the fire station and underneath this roadway. Uh, currently does provide the water service for the new fire station, both domestic water and fire suppression water. Uh, as well as water for the Little League baseball field. Uh, it might also provide water for the maintenance building that the National Guard has on that very end, uh, though we could not confirm that. They may utilize that water line as part of their development uh, opportunity. So provided the uh, correct easements are in place for access and for the water line, uh, the committee had no objection to the proposal. So city staff are going to work out the details if there's any action needed by council in terms of lot line adjustments or any of that, that'll come before us. It was still not quite clear at the time of our meeting. Sticking with the concept of water lines, our next discussion item was the Main Street water line replacement project from the intersection of Indigo Hill Road uh, all the way to the Rawlinsford line at Crockett's Crossing. Uh, that water line is a very aged water line and because of its uh, condition, the soils that it's in, uh, it is one of the water lines in the city that fails with regularity, uh, so we're always out there fixing breaks. Uh, it's about a one-mile stretch of water line, uh, if you were to do the math out there. Uh, and oddly enough, about half of it is under city roadway. Uh, we discontinue at Netto Street, and the remainder of uh, Main Street at that point, all the way to Crockett's Crossing and the Rollinsford Line, uh, is state-owned roadway. Um, the dilemma that we face is that the state of New Hampshire now in the final hour as we're getting ready to prepare bid documents and bid this project uh, does not want us to put the water line under their section of roadway. They want us to move it to the far edge of right of way, which uh, would require tree removal, utility pole uh, relocation. There's an area that would go through wetlands, so it would require extensive permitting to get through that. Um, let me just say the number of obstacles is are many uh, and would slow this project up uh, considerably. We've appealed to the state a couple of different times, writing to the commissioner and others, uh, and it seems as though they haven't been willing to budge to date. Uh, the committee encouraged city staff to continue to try to encourage the state to uh, allow us to put it within the right of way, which is where our engineers had planned to put it. Uh, alongside the old water line, which would be discontinued. Um, and if we can't get to that, uh, the committee favors moving forward with the project only for the half mile that is under Summersworth Roadway, and we would not do the section under the state roadway. Mm -hmm. uh, they would be fully knowledgeable that the water line would continue to break and that we'd have to continue to patch their roadway, which doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to us, but uh, if the state was... Uh, in, so inclined, that's where we would move that uh, and uh, bid the project for just the half mile of, of roadway. So uh, what's interesting through this discussion, we learned that there's a similar water line project in Wolfboro uh, that is going underneath a similar amount of state roadway, and they're allowing it to go under the state roadway there. So what seems to be okay in one state uh, district engineering office does not seem to be the same in another uh, district engineering office. Uh, so it's not quite fair and equitable. Um, 
I'm doing my best not to badmouth the state, and I'll stop now because it won't get better. So uh, more to come on that, but that's sort of the direction uh, that we're heading with that project. Next item we discussed is the uh, replacement, reconstruction, if you will, of the sidewalk on High Street from Memorial, well, actually it's all the way to South Street, from South Street, one block down, all the way to West High Street. I think as most folks in the community know, we replaced a section of sidewalk on the easterly side of High Street during uh, that same stretch last year. Uh, we're looking to do the other side of the street this year. Last year that was done under a TAP grant. Uh, this would be done through our roadway uh, maintenance funds in the city budget. Uh, that's coming close to the end of engineering. Uh, we discussed how uh, that will likely be far more expensive than we anticipated. That section of sidewalk from West High to Memorial Drive, South Street, uh, we're looking at about a million dollars to do that section of sidewalk. Uh, we do have, think we have the money in our roadway resurfacing budget. We probably would not be able to pave that section of High Street this year uh, because of the increase in the cost. Uh, but we would get to it next year and put it on our spring paving list. In all likelihood, we would not be ready to pave that section of High Street this year because of the timeline of this project. It would run well into the fall, we're thinking. Uh, so it would just push us off. And then we come in in the spring of next year through our next budget cycle and pave that section of High Street. So the gateway would have new sidewalks, new roadway, and all of that. So uh, we're still uh, you know, finalizing some of those details, but that's sort of the direction that we're heading uh, there for the time being. Next item we, we discussed uh, at the request of Councillor Gibson was winter maintenance of sidewalks in the Hill District. Um, there are a number of streets, uh, both going up the hill and on the hill, that uh, for a variety of reasons cannot accommodate our sidewalk clearing equipment, our sidewalk tractors. They're, they're too narrow, there's uh, encumbrances, uh, uh, retaining walls that are leaning sort of over the sidewalk, uh, so it's just frankly not doable. Uh, that said, uh, there are sections of sidewalk that we could do. If we were to do all of the hill sidewalks, it would add another 1.6 miles of sidewalks uh, to clear. Uh, it's estimated that that would add another four to eight hours of clearing time for the sidewalk tractor. Um, and uh, it just seems that we struggle to keep up with the amount of sidewalks we have to clear right now. Uh, so the committee does not favor adding to those uh, roads for snow removal at this time. Uh, for sidewalk clearing. Uh, Public Works Director Babinski did note that some of the hill streets, because of their narrow nature with cars that park on the street, that occasionally if we have a lot of snow in a winter, and this is not a good example of one despite what's coming this week, uh, they will occasionally, as time permits, after they clean the downtown and all of that, uh, try to load out snow, haul it away from, the, uh, from some of those streets on the hill but that's not to be confused with routine sidewalk clearing and maintenance. So, um, so we did review it and we're gonna remain status quo uh, as far as the committee was concerned. We then had a discussion of a couple of projects on the state's 10-year uh, uh, highway transportation plan. One involved the sidewalk on West High Street from High Street to Cemetery Road. Uh, that sidewalk is in rough shape and sort of even hard to identify where the sidewalk is at some points along that area. Uh, committee favors keeping that in the state's 10-year uh, highway plan. Um, there are matching funds needed. It's about a 20% match. Uh, again, that section of sidewalk, we anticipate uh, at least a million dollars, if not more. Uh, so we favor, but we did favor moving forward with that to leverage the state money there. The other is a redesign and reconstruction of the intersection at Indigo Hill Road, Blackwater Road, and High Street to get better signal, uh, better alignment of the roads there. Uh, we did favor that as well. Uh, that would be a much bigger ticket item for the city, about 600000 as the projected cost for that intersection work is uh, a little more than $3 million. So um, as part of our discussion about that, though, we did discuss the current signals out there. Um, Sebago Technics, which was the engineering firm for the CMAC project that upgraded all of those signals, 
uh, indicates that they can do a timed sequence similar to what we were doing up here, but they favor perhaps uh, adding actually some turn signal lights uh, for, for Blackwater Road and for Indigo Hill Road. Uh, that would be an additional cost, uh, but we'll, so we're waiting to get those costs to see what that would be. Uh, they think the traffic flow would just be better. Uh, there's higher traffic volume on those two side streets than there is up here. Uh, so the, the sequencing would be longer, uh, and they're concerned about traffic backup, quite frankly. So we are looking to do something there. Exactly what alternative we choose is still being investigated. We do realize that what's there now is just uh, not a good situation. Um, we had some miscellaneous items that we discussed. Uh, but nothing of consequence, so I'll conclude my report. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, just a point of clarification. Go for it. Did a great job, Council, with him uh, reporting on that. I just wanted to add uh, to your report that uh, there is no place to put the snow up there. That's what uh, the director actually said. Uh, it's so tight up there that even if they use, so they have to constantly bring machinery up there and remove snow. So that was one of the additional um, decisions. That's what kind of the board decided not to take any action on it. Just wanted to make that clear. And it was done before, obviously, because there was a school up there. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Councilor Gibson, question as well? Uh, yeah. Um, just, I'll admit I know nothing about sewer lines or water lines, but uh, when you abandon a line, um, isn't there the risk of subsidence in the roadway? Uh, my understanding, talking with the city engineer, that they fill it with a grout-like material that then hardens and it becomes a flowable fill, I think is the term, right? Okay. So, yep. Thank you. Fascinating. Flowable fill. Um, thank you. Uh, lastly, we have Recreation Committee, Councilwoman Cameron. Thank you, Anna. Um, you'll have to bear with me. I'm kind of winging it. I have no minutes from the meeting, so here goes. Um, we met on March 20th. And our first item on the agenda was about the Ash Street Park. And there are going to be some improvements coming in the second phase of it. There is plans for what type of plants to plant and the trees that we'll be planting around there. Um, they're looking into another grant from Home Depot to help with the pollinator plants and the trees and whatever else they can help um, with upgrading it um, if there is a small balance of the city project fund that exists and we could use some of that to purchase other plantings for what Home Depot doesn't cover um, they went over there to look to see if there are any repairs that needed to be done after the winter and there weren't any so that was encouraging that it hasn't been tampered with um, we also had talked about a butterfly life cycle sign to be put out there and city staff was going to go out there and kind of adjust the size of the sign to, s to go from there to see what size would be appropriate and then we're going to have a sign out there um, showing the migration of the butterfly and another interesting one we were looking at was to have like a um, a butterfly put out there and I don't know if anybody can really see this but it's a picture of butterfly and to have it done up so that your kids could have pictures taken with the butterfly at the butterfly park. So we're kind of very excited about that. Um, so we're waiting to hear back on how that's going to progress and what um, we'll be able to do. And after that, we talked about the Mally Farm. And we have um, USA Softball of New Hampshire that is looking to... Um, have some tournaments out there this year and they will help maintain the infields, help with concession, porta parties, dumpster trash removal, um, and any small repairs that would need to be done. And we're hoping if this year is successful, they might be looking into a second year being more long term out there. So that's kind of very exciting. Um, the tournaments will start in May, June, and end around the second week of August, and possibly some fall ball opportunities out there as well. And that could possibly, uh, possibly bring 200 to 400 people to Summersworth. So kind of very exciting, because that's bringing a lot of people into the city and showing them what we got here. So that's very exciting. And um, they talked about, um, 
the, the rec director talked about how great the rec desk um, was working for them, the online registration for their programming. She said it's the best thing that ever happened to them and it's very successful. So we're very glad to hear that as well. And our meeting ended about five o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that brings us to agenda item 12, which is reports of special committees. Are there any report, uh, reports of special committees tonight? Seeing none, I will turn it over to the city manager to deliver his manager's report. Thank you, Honor. Members of, com uh, members of council, uh, I have the following comments this evening. And quite frankly, under unfinished business, I don't have anything further to offer as far as new information. Jumping over to new business, ordinance 1324 to amend chapter 19 in our zoning ordinance table of uses. Um, and it, it just, uh, it's just table 4.8.5 if you're interested in looking it up under chapter 19 it's be adding notes 11 through 11.4 regarding motor vehicle service related uses within the residential commercial district the economic development committee of council met on march 4th and after discussion voted to support this ordinance being moved to the full council for consideration and vote I provided you a copy of a memorandum that Director Michelle Mears prepared regarding these proposed amendments along with a redline version of these zoning sections. And I recommend, Your Honor, a public hearing prior to the next or at the next regular council meeting on April 15th. Without objection. Under informational items, I will add the following. I'm very pleased to announce the selection of Lieutenant Matthew Moore as the city's next fire chief. And in that capacity, I will also be appointing him as the city's emergency management director. Matt was selected after an extensive assessment process. Matt has been with the Summersworth Fire Department for over 23 years. Matt began his career as a call firefighter in May of 2000. He was later hired as a full-time firefighter in December of 2001 and promoted to lieutenant in April 2016. Matt is a graduate of Summersworth High School and a United States Navy veteran. Matt is very excited and honored to take on his new post as he shared with me and in turn I am very excited on his ability to take on this new leadership role at the Summersworth Fire Department. He is also looking forward to working with the city's management team as he takes on his new post as they are looking forward to working with him. Matt also shared with me that he is the third member of his family to hold the position of chief for the Summersworth Fire Department, following his great-grandfather Arthur Netto, who was fire chief of the department, and grandfather Mark Netto, who was assistant fire chief there. Matt will be officially sworn in as fire chief on May 6th at Summersworth City Hall at a time to be determined. Matt, if you could just stand up so folks don't know who you are, they can see who you are, and congratulations. That concludes my report, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, and congratulations. Very excited to have you in the role. Your Honor. Yes. I, I know it's probably not in order because it's not on the agenda, but I just want to publicly thank Matt and welcome him to the new role. Um, you know, it's been a long time since we've had a member from the ranks uh, even put their name in to be a fire chief here in Summersworth. So I think that's tremendously exciting. I think it, it shows the growth opportunities within the department. Uh, and I thank Matt for doing that and accepting the challenge. Uh, we are in very good hands. So welcome aboard. Your Honor. Thank you. Yes. For my comment also. Absolutely. You know, I spent 33 years at the Summersworth Fire Department and uh, Matt's whole career was actually when I was there along with my sidekick and Dave with him, counsel with him also. We were all there. You know, we were all, uh, a, a, it, was a, it was a good family. It really was. It was. We helped out a lot of people. And, you know, Matt is a stand-up guy. He was on my shift for several years. Uh, very educated, Matt. I'm so proud of you. And you couldn't have said it better, Dave, you know, to keep uh, it inside the city. Uh, this is a way that someone knows uh, what's been going on, what's, what goes on inside, what the, how the guys are or the girls are, you know, because there are men and women or women who work there also, not at this time, but there were. So and in, and in theory to speak that, the, that women work, you know, 
in other departments, and we've had uh, several women on our station. So, but I can't tell you how excited I am and proud that we're keeping it inside, uh, and it just, uh, I think it just does a, just a tremendous, and I mean tremendous, uh, thing for morale, so to speak. Uh, so welcome aboard, Matt. Man, you deserved it. You're a smart guy. You're an educated guy. You know what's going on. You've, you've used your head. And this wasn't given to you. You worked for it very hard. And I'm, and I'm proud to say that. Thank you. And congratulations, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations. All right. That moves us to agenda item 13, uh, which is nominations, appointments, and elections. Um, under nominations, appointments, and elections, in accordance with Council Rule 17, appointments, the following are being brought forward tonight uh, for appointment. Uh, first up is Bradley Fredette for reappointment to the Zoning Board of Adjustments with a term to expire April 2027. What are the wishes of the Council tonight? Okay, we already had our first reading. I'm looking for a second. Councilor Pretty Catanzaro. I'll move for the approval of the nomination. All right, Councillor Cardi Catanzaro uh, moves to confirm the nominee, seconded by Councillor uh, Michu. Question for the council tonight is on the confirmation of Bradley Fredette for reappointment to the Zoning Board of Adjustments with a term to expire April 2027. Discussion? All right, seeing none, if you are in favor of the motion, we will please state by saying aye. 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 All right, all those opposed, please state by saying nay. Oh. All right, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and the nominee has been confirmed. Uh, next up, we have Nancy Mitchell for appointment to the Library Board of Trustees with a term to expire April 2029. What are the wishes of the council? Yes, Councillor Cameron. I'll make a motion to um, nominate. All right, Councillor Cameron moves to confirm the nominee. Is that right? Yes, seconded by Councilor uh, Goodwin. Uh, question for the council is on the confirmation of Nancy Mitchell for the appointment uh, to the Library Board of Trustees with a term to expire April 2029. Discussion? Okay, uh, seeing none, if you are in favor of the motion, please state by saying aye. 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 If you are opposed, please state by saying nay. All right, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. Nominee is confirmed. Uh, and lastly tonight, we have Sarah Roberts Terry for appointment to the Library Board of Trustees with a term to expire April 2029. What are the wishes of the council? Move to approve the nominee. Thank you. Councilor Witham moves to approve the nominee, uh, seconded by Councilor Gibson. The question for the council is on the confirmation of Sarah Roberts Terry for appointment to the Library Board of Trustees with a term to expire April 2029. Discussion? Okay, seeing none. Uh, if you are in favor of the motion, please state by saying aye. 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 If you are opposed, please state by saying nay. All right. Ayes appear to have it. Ayes have it. And the nominee has been confirmed. Uh, next up, we have item 14, which is items that have been laid upon the table. Tonight on the table, we have Ordinance 9-24, Fiscal Year 2024-2025 Budget. Uh, since we have a budget workshop this Saturday, April 6th, starting at 8.30 a.m., it would certainly be my recommendation that this remain on the table until we have had our workshop. If anyone wishes to make a motion otherwise, you're welcome to, but that's my recommendation. Seeing none, it will remain on the table for now. All right. Next up is agenda item 15, which is unfinished business. Uh, the chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on ordinance 10-24 to amend chapter 32 water ordinance by amending section 16.1.a titled rates, fees, and charges to increase the water utility rates effective July 1st, 2024 and July 1st, 2025, which if approved would increase water rates to $5.94 per 100 cubic feet starting July 1st, 2024 and then to $6.53 cents per 100 cubic feet beginning July 1st, 2025. City Clerk. Ordinance number 1024 to amend chapter 32 water ordinance by amending section 16.1.A titled rates, fees, and charges to increase the water utility rates effective July 1st, 2024 and July 1st, 2025. Thank you. Ordinance 10-24 having been read a first and now second time is open to further amendment. Okay, no amendment being offered. The chair will look for a motion on Ordinance 10-24. Second. 
Yes, Councillor Witham. Move for the adoption of the ordinance. Councillor Witham moves to adopt ordinance 10 24, seconded by Councillor Messier. Uh, motion before the council is to adopt ordinance 10 24. Discussion. Yes, Councillor Witham. Yes, thank you. Uh, I don't take it lightly that this is a rate increase. Uh, when it was discussed at committee level, we were very thoughtful in terms of how that rate increase would be applied. Um, it's a fee, it's a rate, uh, some people might call it a form of tax, but uh, what this does is support that particular enterprise fund, that being the water fund. Um, what we've tried to do over a number of years here is to be thoughtful in our approach to rate increases where we've sort of continued to nudge them up knowing that we have large capital projects looming, uh, uh, an upgrade to the water treatment facility, uh, we, we've, I just talked about the water line replacement on Main Street. Uh, these are million plus dollar projects. Uh, we are in need of replacing the water tank, the standpipe up at Noble Pines. Uh, that's a six, seven, eight, who knows, nine million dollar project. These are very expensive capital projects and by nudging up our utility rates uh, gradually over time, we're able to keep pace so that we can have cash on hand to operate, to do repairs, uh, and to tee us up so that we're not looking at huge uh, capital outlays uh, impacting the rate all at once. Uh, so it's a, it's a gradual step process versus an all at once whack. Uh, the last thing I would say about this, and the comments I'm saying here apply to the next ordinance on the sewer, uh, so I'll save uh, that one. Uh, but. Uh, uh, when you compare our water or sewer rates to surrounding communities, uh, we are still uh, below and very uh, in line with, uh, with our neighbors. So uh, we're well positioned. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, Councilor Gibson. Okay, my one concern would be it may feel like a nudge to the chairman, but 10% two years in a row on the rates. Um, you're already looking at property tax increases as well as people have been hammered left and right with inflation and cost of services in general. Is there a reason why it could not be spread over a longer time frame to lower the impact to the homeowners in the community and the businesses? Are you looking for a question or an answer from Councilor Witham? I'll open it to him if that's okay yes, with you. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, uh, I could tell you that uh, the city staff, Finance Director Smith, uh, had done a number of calculations looking at different options, and that's the one that, that we seem to favor. Uh, certainly could do it uh, spread out smaller over a number of years, but I'm not sure that gets us to where we need to get quick enough. Um, that was part of our discussion. There, there's sort of a target we need to get to, uh, and that was part of the calculation. So I'm not sure that smaller increments over more years gets us there fast enough, but I would defer that to Director Smith or the city manager, uh, however we feel fit. City manager, do you have any more that you would like to add? Uh, Councilor Gibson, you still have the floor if you have any other if questions. If somebody has more information, I'm open. All right. Yes, Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Ronnie. Yeah, you know, I'm concerned about that also because I'm the, I think sometimes I'm the guy who's more concerned about money here than some other council members. Uh, just looking at all around because I'm always the guy that's looking at the cash. And I agree, but you have to understand something. Um, I think that when, when you look at the sewage treatment plant, when we just spent millions of dollars on that, we kind of are leading now the other other uh, waste treatment plants in the state. I mean, we had people that came to us and said, wow, you guys took this big jump and like you're got one of the better treatment plants. Another thing that came into uh, play was that um, we are still cheaper. Uh, and, and I get 10%, Councilor. I, I hear you. I hear you 100%. But we are still <laughs> cheaper than all the surrounding communities. And I don't mean to say, um, you know, oh, because we're cheaper, let's just raise the rate. We have some big ticket items that Council Witham had mentioned. We have to put up a water tank. 
in, uh, on the Hill that's going to cost millions of dollars. Hopefully we'll get federal funding. So that, I just wanted to kind of explain that a little bit more. Um, I hope that kind of explains it for you. Thank you. Yes, Councilor Gibson. I'll trade you lower water rates for higher tax rates. That's... It's fine to be cheaper on one thing than other communities, but we're still one of the highest tax rates in the state. And the individuals paying the water bills are also paying the property taxes. Other discussion? Yes, Council Crafton. I think when we discussed this is that the city manager and, and Scott of, of of basically kind of like looking down the road of what we're going to have to have to spend in the in the future i mean there's always upgrades on our water treatment plant there's always upgrade on our sewage treatment plants they're always in, they're in the works now uh the architects are working on them now we're, we're looking at the putting a new tank on on top of the on top of the pines which basically is being pushed ahead of times because we can't put a cover on the top of it because no one will the estimates are just sky high and it's better off just to replace it so what we're trying to look to do is that to do these increases now that is not going to put us into a situation that we have to do a huge increase at a time when all these bills are coming in at one time and then you're going to have to pay them all at one shot. So I think that that was the whole discussion of, of trying to get not so much ahead of it but keep a balance and making sure that we have the money available when it comes time to, to do these projects because lots of times we don't have any control over it. The state tells us what to do down the sewage treatment plant. State tells us what to do. We want a quality of water. We have to improve these things. Um, I don't think you have to go too far across the border over there to see how what their water problems are over there. We don't have that problem because we're fortunate they'll look forward in, into the future. And I think that's very, very important. So uh, I, I don't think it's just because we want to increase the water water rates is because we're trying to plan that it's not going to make a big impact when all these things have to be done all at one time and when i ran for city council that's what i that's what i ran on basically is that kind of like plan for the future just don't wait till the thing happens and that we have to lump it out all at one time so that's my comment thank you other discussion tonight yes councilor Ress here yeah i agree with a lot of said what this does is minimize the cost later because they've done a long-range plan looking at the future projects that we got if we want the community to grow you got to have a good wastewater plant you got to have a good infrastructure and water plant both those are most likely at some point are going to need another upgrade um, let's also not lose sight of the fact that when we do roads complete streets or whatever we save the taxpayer money because some of those monies for the water or sewer come out of these funds. I mean, it's good business to have money in these funds that help minimize the cost of projects at a later date. Um, they're enterprise funds. That's what the intent is, is to do. Nobody likes increases, but it's a reality. I'd rather minimize the cost now than pay a huge sum or have to take it out of the undesignated and that's really not the way you should do it with the enterprise fund. So I support both of these ordinances and, uh, and we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, Councilor. Vincent. One other quick thing to mention is when you start adding multiple units of living space, you have to have the capacity to be able to feed those units. You know, you do a, a 200 here, a 100 over here, and over there. So you have to have that capacity. So that's why it, making an increase definitely helps us to be able to stay a, ahead of the game. Thank you. Yes, Councilor Gibson. Uh, I agree with what the other councilors are saying in large part. The only thing I wonder, these projects are all going to be bonded which will be over a period of somewhere between 10 and 20 years. I'm not sure what it would be. That's where I'm coming from is these are not all going to be bills hitting at the same time. They're going to be broken into increments as far as paying for them. Um, so that's, I guess, where my confusion comes from. 
further discussion tonight? All right. So again, the motion on the table is to approve ordinance 10-24. Um, if you are in favor of the adoption of ordinance 10-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? No. Charity Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. All right, ordinance 10 24 has been adopted. The chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on ordinance 11 24 to amend chapter 8A sewer ordinance by amending charges article 15, section 7. Point B titled sewer use volume charges to increase the sewer volume charges effective July 1st, 2024 and July 4, uh, 1st, 2025, which if approved would increase sewer rates to $8.83 per 100 cubic feet starting July 1st, 2024 and then to $9.75 per 100 cubic feet beginning July 1st, 2025. City Clerk. Ordinance number 1124 to amend chapter 8A sewer ordinance by amending charges article 15, section 7.B, titled Sewer Use Volume Charges to increase the sewer volume charges effective July 1st, 2024 and July 1st, 2025. Thank you. Ordinance 11-24, having been read a first and now second time, is open to further amendment. All right, seeing no amendment, uh, Chair will look for a motion on Ordinance 11-24. Councilor Witham? Move for the adoption of the ordinance. Councilor Witham moves for the adoption of Ordinance 11-24, seconded by Councilor Michu. Uh, motion for the council is to adopt <coughs> ordinance 11 24 discussion. Okay, seeing none, if you are in favor of the adoption of ordinance 11 24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? No. Parity Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. Ordinance 10 24 has been adopted. Oh, 11, thank you. Is it, is it the second time I've done that? Yes, thank you. 11 24 has been adopted. Adopted. Good catch. No, no, it was a good catch. Um, that brings us to 12 24. Chair recognizes clerk for a second reading on Ordinance 12 24, supplemental appropriation for additional funding needed for the water meter replacement program, which if, if approved would appropriate $75,000 from the water fund and $50,000 from the sewer fund for the water meter replacement program. City Clerk. Ordinance number 1224, supplemental appropriation for additional funding needed for the water meter replacement program. Thank you. Ordinance 12-24 having been read a first and now second time is open to further amendment. Seeing no amendment, um, Chair will look for a motion on Ordinance 12-24. Councilor Witham? Move for its adoption. Councilor I'll Witham that. moves for the adoption of Ordinance 12-24, seconded by Councilor Vincent. Motion before the Council is to adopt Ordinance 12-24. Is there discussion? All right, seeing none. Uh, before we vote, I just want to remind Council that because this is a supplemental appropriation, I will need a two-thirds majority vote for passage. Just want to make that clear. Is, the, is that clear to folks? Okay. If you are in favor of the adoption of Ordinance 12-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parity Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. Ordinance 12-24 has been adopted. All right, brings us to resolutions tonight. Under old business, chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 41-24 uh, to authorize city manager to use funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and the Cable Fund to contract with Brightly Software Inc. of Cary, North Carolina for SmartGov software for the Department of Developmental Services, which if approved would utilize $48,386 of funds to purchase a digital permitting and management software. City clerk. Resolution number 4124, to authorize the city manager to use funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and the Cable Fund to contract with Brightly Software Inc. of Cary, North Carolina for SmartGov software. Thank you. Resolution 41-24, having been read a first and second time, is now open to further amendment. Seeing none, uh, Chair will look for a motion. Yes, you have an amendment? I don't know if, well, 
Um, I would like to s see other funding source for it and have the cable fund removed from it. Do you have a funding source on hand to make up the difference no, for the amendment? I don't think it's appropriate usage of the cable fund. Okay. Um, that should be debate rather than... Is, is that an amendment that he's offering? Yeah, we, I would need an amendment. Okay. If your amendment withdraw. is to... Say that again, I'm sorry. I withdraw. Okay, thank you. Um, other amendments before we move to discussion? Okay. So, again, I think I still need a motion, actually. Motion to adopt thank you. the resolution as presented. Thank you. Councilor Witham moves for the adoption of Ordinance 12, or excuse me, Resolution 41-24, seconded by Councilor Goodwin. Now I will open to discussion. Oh, there's discussion. Yes, Councilor Gibson. I don't believe that that's an appropriate usage of the cable fund money. Cable fund was to enhance the electronic services pertaining to City Hall's cable system, the school's cable systems. Um, to buy software, I question the validity of that. Councilor Goodwin. Uh, I'm not super familiar with what the cable fund is, but if that were the intent, I certainly think there's value in very broadly interpreting that intent of improving communications with technology for uh, the government, either the school or the city hall. This software is doing that. It is reducing paperwork. It is making uh, electronic uh, transactions easier and more seamless. So I think I would broadly interpret the intent of the cable fund to be met by this software. Councilor Weather. Yeah, I'd certainly accept a challenge to my understanding, but I have always had that same understanding that uh, the, the cable fund has been broadly interpreted. It's not uh, steadfast as to what it's to be used for. Councillor Gibson is right. It is designed to help with our airing of public access, the cameras and equipment for that. Uh, but it has been broadly interpreted for, for things as uh, th like this software, which help with communication and ease of doing business. So uh, it, we've used it in that manner before. Thank you. Councilor Messier. Yeah, I'd just like to say that I support this resolution. I went to a neighboring community, and that planning department uses a, not this exact one, but a similar one. Um, there's a little more restrictive. If you don't use theirs, then you get pushed further in the line. We don't have that here, so it just brings us into the 21st or second, whatever century we're in. So, and as one that had a angst about monies used out of the cable fund, I'm gonna go along with this one. We've done other projects that it's kind of a stretch, but it's a piggy bank for some people to spend money, so. We have to approve it. So there you go. Thank you, Councillor Vincent. And then Thank you, Your Honor. Um, a couple of things. Um, when this cable fund was set up, there had to be some type of definition for what it was going to be spent for. It'd be nice to be able to see what, <laughs> maybe what was in the minutes. Maybe someone can go back and find them. Uh, but the second comment is, um, <laughs> look. Our poor permitting and planning department has been has had nothing at all. Now this changes the whole game. You now you can go online and apply for permits. Uh, you can do so much stuff, and it helps them out to be able to really come up into the age. It's an expensive endowment, you know. It's it really is, but it's what the community needs to kind of get us into like the the present, so to speak. So I'm definitely for it, but it would be kind of nice to know what that definition is because I think we've used the cable fund for everything, and I'm not trying to be, you know, a wise guy. I just think that would be nice. Maybe it is. Maybe we can't spend it on anything. I don't know. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. No. That was not the intent. The intent was to provide upgrades to the cable systems in the city. And the reason I know that is I sat on that committee. 
and turning it into a piggy bank for anything is totally inappropriate use of funds. I wasn't here for any other uses of it, so I don't know what happened in the past, but I will not vote to approve this. Thank you. Other discussion? Councilor Witham. I put a great deal of faith in our city staff in not utilizing something that utilizing a fund that it can't be used for. So I'll start with that, right? So uh, let me just say that I, I, I trust city staff to do the right thing. And then, like so many things in city government, we have a series of checks and balances. Every resolution and the ordinance that come before us are run in front of an independent third party legal counsel. So legal counsel has reviewed this resolution and have deemed it to be appropriate. So if legal counsel felt that the use of the cable fund was inappropriate, they too could have flagged it. So I have trust in city staff, plus the vetting through legal counsel. I'm going to put my eggs in those baskets. Mr. Mayor. Chicken things running rampant tonight. <laughs> Lots of chicken there. Yes, Councillor, uh, let's let Councillor Pepper go. He hasn't spoken yet, and then I'll have you on after. Thank you. Go ahead. I guess one of the things I'm a little confused about is that when we were told about this program and stuff like this, I thought it was uh, the way it was explained that people would be able to go online and access different information as far as building permits and, and guidelines and everything else. Uh, as far as I know, that comes through cable. Uh, rather, you look at it through the Internet. Uh, so I don't know what we're arguing this for, but um, it, it is what it is, I guess. Thank you. Councilor Gibson. Never mind. Okay. Others for discussion? Okay. Seeing none. Uh, if you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 41-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? No. Parity Cotton Zero? Yes. 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 Resolution 41-24 has been adopted. All right, brings us to new business. Uh, I believe we have just have one tonight. Uh, chair will recognize the clerk for a first reading on ordinance 13-24 to amend chapter 19 zoning ordinance. Oh, you have a quick, um, go ahead. Can we have it read by title only? It's only, it's like three pages long, unless if that's a motion, it's a second. <laughs> we yeah. have a motion it's by Councillor Messier to read by title only, seconded by Council Witham. Is there uh, I get no discussion on that one? That's just non-debatable, if I remember correctly. Oh, right. Thank you. I don't know these things yet. I'm learning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I will open that to discussion if folks would like to. All right. Again, yes, Councillor Gibson, go for it. Makes it. perfect sense to me. Okay. I want to go home. <laughs> I love it. All right, seeing no other discussion, again, the motion tonight is to read ordinance 13-24 by title only. If you are, what's that? Yeah, wave council rules, excuse me, thank you. Read Wave council rules to read ordinance 13-24 by title only. Um, if you are in favor of this, uh, you will please state by saying aye. 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 If you are opposed, state by saying no. All right, the ayes appear to have it, the ayes have it. We will read by title only. Clerk, will you please read ordinance 13-24 by title only. Ordinance number 1324, to amend chapter 19 zoning ordinance, table of uses, table 4.8.5, and adding notes 11 through 11.4, regarding motor vehicle service related uses within the residential commercial district. Thank you. All right. Ordinance 13-24 having been read a first time, uh, will remain in first reading until uh, after our public hearing next meeting and uh, will be then read at that point. All right, brings us to agenda item 17, which is comments by visitors. Summersworth City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you uh, to voice your opinions and views at council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7-C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the Council wishes to suspend the rules. Speakers shall not enter into debate with any person, Mayor, City Council members, City Manager, or Department Heads. Thank you for being here tonight. If you'll just make sure that's on and say your name and ward you live in. My name is John Joyle. I live at 1 Molly Lane in Summersworth. For those of you that don't know me. Uh, 
That's why I'm here. Years ago, when I came here, 34 years ago, I bought property in this city, uh, reasonably priced at the time, unlike the property is the today, but anyhow, uh, I used to take my wallet out of my back pocket to let civil servants, of which I'm a retired civil servant, know that every time you blink, you take money out of the taxpayer's wallet. Okay, unfortunately, that's the way it is. It's called paying it forward. It took me all these years to feel, figure that out, but I read a lot of things about health and how I can prolong my life uh, because of some of the things that I've been experiencing. But uh, as a property owner, it gives me great satisfaction to know uh, Robert Belmore, city manager, thank you very much for making Matt Moore fire chief. I can't thank you enough for that. And, and I've had the opportunity to work with Mr. Belmore and a couple of his department heads over the last year plus uh, with some tree issues and some other things. And thank you for that also. But, you know, I, I used to get up here all the time and, and, and preach to people uh, about the, the way that it should be. Well, I, I, I've done some of the stuff that you people are doing, and I commend you immensely. Uh, but I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, my, my family, my wife and I, and my daughter, thank you very much for making Matt Moore the fire chief in this city. Uh, when I found that out the other day at the, at the market basket, uh, when they had the, the food drive, uh, it brought a lot of satisfaction to me. I've fought tooth and nail uh, on on their budget and other things over the years through city councils come and gone uh, and found that out that uh, <clears throat> promoting within, that's good good duty uh, for the city. And, and I, I have to thank you again for, for making that choice. You, I think you hit that right on the nose. And, and uh, knowing that, he, he comes from uh, a well-to-do, established people in the past uh, in that position. That, that, that warms my heart. So thank you very much. That, that's all I really wanted to say. I, I can't tell you enough uh, how much that enlightens me. But back, back to the reading about my, my uh, good health. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Other uh, comments by visitors tonight? Other comments by visitors? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to closing comments by council members. We'll start to my right, Councillor Witham. Nothing tonight, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Goodwin. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> um, just wanted to speak to uh, an up, uh, just a reminder that the next um, uh, Economic Development Committee meeting on April 11th, I believe, at 4.30, 7 p.m., thank you, <laughs> um, is, uh, is a community meeting to discuss the reuse of the uh, of one Winter Street property, the former Breton Cleaner site, uh, which the city owns, um, had previously put out to RFP to no success, and then um, had uh, also uh, assessed um, a food truck uh, sort of establishment there that uh, seems less feasible now. So I uh, want to have a community meeting to uh, engage folks in the dialogue on what the city might be able to do with that site. Um, so please help get the word out and come join that conversation so we can, um, uh, you know, figure out our next steps forward. I also wanted to speak to uh, the new business from this evening, Ordinance 13-24, uh, which is amending Chapter 19, uh, the zoning ordinance. Uh, to remove uh, car-related, more co related services from the residential commercial district, uh, which is the zoning district along High Street. Um, this is uh, an important item for me, um, and I think it speaks to a number of sentiments that have been mentioned earlier when we were talking about the water and sewer fee adjustments. It comes down to uh, long-range planning and planning for the future, and that 
putting our best foot forward along our most visible corridor, really our front door to much of our community is High Street. And uh, we have done much to uh, provide needed services such as car repair and car washes um, and it's spanning the tax base by allowing that type of development. However, I believe we've reached a point where uh, the city needs to lead on what the next phase of development on High Street looks like. Uh, we have uh, three car washes on High Street currently. There are two on 108 and one just across the border in Dover. So that's six car washes in less than a three mile radius. Uh, interestingly, after this came through, um, uh, the, the, one of the reasons this came up, one of the reasons I brought this up to the committee was that during my time on the planning board, we had approved the new car wash that's next to Walmart. Um, you know, that was in construction. And then we had an application um, come in for uh, an, an initial review for another car wash across the street from, um, from Goodwill on the last remaining greenfield site on High Street, really. Uh, and my first reaction, and I feel like much of the board members' reactions was grown, another car wash, a car wash across from a car wash. Um, and thankfully that, you know, I don't say this lightly, but thankfully that applicant withdrew um, and that car wash is not currently being planned. Um, however, I think we should be proactive in uh, guiding growth along our front door to be um, more forward-looking, higher value. Our community is well-served by these businesses already. It would still be permitted uh, permitted use in other zones. Um, it, oh, and anyway, since, since that uh, initially came up in the Economic Development Committee meeting, there's actually been a number of national reporting on the proliferation of car washes. So Bloomberg did a piece, NPR has also done a piece, um, and it essentially boils down to a private equity bubble uh, in that there are uh, there's a lot of wealth uh, out there seeking passive income, and this is a trendy mechanism for people with means to build a facility that uh, hires very few people, so there's not really contributing to the local economy. There's coin-operated, um, card-operated machines, um, uh, uh, subscription services, and one or two employees, and uh, you've got a steady stream of income. So that's a nice gig for them. It's a valuable service, but do I want a private equity bubble um, building uh, redundant services that then ultimately get abandoned and then uh, the city is left with a vacant property of which we also have several vacant um, car related businesses, two gas stations on High Street which are vacant. So I don't wanna see more vacant car related uses which is why um, that part of the ordinance uh, was brought forward. The second is also, second part of that ordinance uh, is also coming from insights during my time on the planning board. You know, it's not often that you get a room full of people uh, that come out to public meetings. And two of the times that that happened during my time on the planning board was because existing uh, auto repair facilities were causing so much noise that the abutting community came out in number. Um, our existing ordinance does have uh, a buffer between those uses and residential areas. It is clearly insufficient, so that needs to be increased. Uh, and there are a number of other um, remediating factors that are proposed in the zoning update that will help limit uh, the nuisance complaints that uh, abutting residential properties have. Again, these are needed services. I'm not trying to uh, make uh, car repair uh, inaccessible, but uh, I do think the livability of our city um, requires us to be mindful about uh, where we put it, um, and on our front door and direct to uh, residential areas is not uh, not serving us as well as it could. So with that, uh, I conclude. Thank you, Councillor Cameron. Thank you, Anna. Um, I too would like to publicly congratulate Mr. Moore. Um, on your promotion. I know you'll serve the city well, and I know the community is very excited to have you lead us onward. And Johnny Joel, I've never seen you so excited in my life about something, except when we talk about plants in your garden.
And on a last note, three weeks from this Saturday, April 20th, is going to be the kickoff of Don't Trash Summersworth. So I would like to invite everybody. It's one hour of your time. That's Saturday from 2 to 3. We're going to meet at the upper parking lot of Home Depot, and we'll clean from Handle Drive down Commercial Drive down to the Willand Warming Center. That will be our first place to go. And I'm very excited about kicking it off, and I look forward to having a big turnout. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Next up, Councillor Messier. Thank you. Uh, a couple of things. The housing committee that's doing some housing work or whatever. I don't know if anybody read in on the Foster's line or whatever paper. ADUs. Dover is actively trying to recruit. Hear the word. Recruit homeowners to put in two, if they can, aux auxiliary um, dwelling units, whatever. I don't know in the community here if we've even attempted it. And Dover also got a credit union to help fund some of that money. I would hope that we could look at that because that is a viable option that can help whether it's small or whatever, that can help. I'm not saying you have to do two. I don't have a problem with two. If they have parking, they have enough parking that doesn't infringe upon the neighbor, and they have sewer and water or whatever, then I don't have a problem with that. Um, so that's enough on that. I hope we can look at auxiliary dwelling units. And then um, ordinance, future ordinance 1324, if it'd be possible to get a map where they hope to do this. Um, the outcry came from Firestone in that neighborhood, and that's fine. Uh, I don't know if government should be picking winners and losers of businesses with an existing footprint. Um, here's what's gonna go, development, Funny it comes out of economic development. Economic development, you should want to develop economic. Retail has gone down, not not done well. So now you're going to say you're going to exclude people to have their cars worked on at shops or whatever. Not that I have a problem with many. I do have a problem with some of the shops that are existing, but they were old and on existing property. Is this strictly High Street, or are you going down one away? Because I also read in some of the initial stuff had to do with car dealerships. So all of a sudden now we're going to pick winners and choosers on that? I don't think that's what it is. Economic development, what is your viable alternative for some of the existing lots for, for development? All houses? That's interesting. But, I mean, people need... You, you criticize car washes. People like myself, I really don't want to wash my car. I'll go through the car wash, whether I put the card in or whatever. I don't care. The cards used every. You go to the garden in Boston, you don't bring cash. You can't. They don't accept cash. That's the way everything is done these days, or a lot of things, not everything. So I do have some concerns on 1324 at this point in time, and this isn't a threat. This is just most likely a promise that I'm not going to support it, but I'm only one out of nine. Um, so that's all, enough on that. A um, couple of few positive things. The food drive that was spoken about at Home Depot, Home Depot, Market Basket. I'd like to thank all of the participants, Rawlinsford PD and Fire, I believe, are there. Our Summersworth PD and Fire, Stewart's. Um, so I want to, I think that was a wonderful thing right there. It was busy when I was there, so I want to thank them all. Also, on our police department, I don't know if anybody noticed on Facebook that Officer Tully had a service dog to one of our elementary schools. Um, I think that's a wonderful thing. That's where point source reduction, where you get the attitudes towards police officers to be a start, to be a positive light. Um, so whatever they do is, is, is a wonderful thing for me with that. Also, some of our police officers 
going to their former colleges and helping with recruitment of police officers. Um, selectment of the new, the selection of the new fire chief, Mr. Moore, is an outstanding select for everything that was said tonight. Homegrown entity, grow from within, um, and we'll see what goes on, you know, with the assistant chief and then the lieutenant to backfill his position. Um, for another shout out to an employee, Anna from the planning department did a lot of the legwork and um, work on that Brightly Software Incorporated. So I know it's your job, but thank you. So I know it's hard to believe, but that's it. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pepin. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Matt, congratulations. Um, your family goes back a long ways with me. Um, your great-grandfather, Arthur Neto, put me on the call department, so I served under him when he was when he was a uh, chief. Uh, so I guess I'm showing my age right now. Um, and I, I learned so much off of him, especially as coming in not knowing nothing, and he, and he gave me the, the fuel to keep on going into the fire service to actually love it as much as I, I loved it from every day I served there. Uh, your grandfather, Mark Neto, um, wasn't just assistant chief, he was also my shift officer. So I served with him practically almost all my private life with him almost as, as a permanent firefighter. Uh, they both taught me so much in the fire service. So I know it's in your blood. Um, I've listened to Chief Hoyle say nothing but good for you. Chief Delna, this guy here beside me has high praise for you. Uh, I think we only served probably four years, and I don't think you were on my shift, so I didn't really get a chance to really know you personally that deeply well as, as much as the rest of these guys have. But there is, your bloodline goes deep into the fire service, and I have no doubt in my mind you'll probably be the best chief that Summers will have ever had. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to make a comment on the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, dual dwelling or the additional dwelling unit. Um, at the state house, we heard the bill this past week, um, and I was I did not vote for it. I just can't see. Uh, uh, it's just a comment. I'm not going to stand along, but I just can't see having a a commercial or a, or a residential neighborhood that has 20 homes and now they have 60 families in there. I think it's going to be a zoo. I don't think it passed the state house. I can't remember, and I apologize. I think we did 40 or 50 bills. We were there till 7 o'clock at night, and it was a very testing day. But nevertheless, uh, that was my on that. And one more comment about um, what you talked about, about, um, about High Street. You know, I got here six years ago, and I've said this, and I'll continue to say it, that, high, that Main Street was Main Street, but the new Main Street's High Street. Because that's the corridor to our city. And I'm not trying to dog Main Street anymore. It's just, it's not, it's not the corridor to our city. It's, it's, it's kind of mellowed out. It's a great neighborhoods to live in and stuff, but High Street's the corridor. And, um, you know, and we looked at the, the new project that's coming in with um, uh, sidewalks and stuff. And I even questioned that, voting against it, because we really need space. I mean... That may be an extension, and I know it's in Dover, of, you know, the Miracle Mile, Central Avenue. There's double lanes down there, you know, and that may ex eventually um, extend up here into us, into close to the city hall. It just, you know, maybe it's 10 years down the road, 15 years down the road, and you need a sidewalk anyway, so it'll make it good to have. But I just think that, that this city needs to focus on that whole deal. Uh, right down High Street because I think that's where we should put our money and the growth and and just when you come into the city this is what you see and, and I'm all for that so um, thank you thank you Councillor Gibson all set thank you Councillor Parity Catanzaro good evening um, welcome and congratulations to the new fire chief I've heard nothing but wonderful things about you I'm very very excited for um, this next period in Summersworth also wanted to express my um, 
excitement at our new superintendent as well. I, I saw in the paper that John Shea was approved. Um, speaking of somebody else coming back into the city who's, who's had some wonderful work done here already. Um, so just very excited about that. That's all tonight. Thank you. And lastly, Councilor Mishu. Thank you, Anna. That I also want to congratulate you on your new position as fire chief. I did not realize the family history you had. So I'm realizing you're the perfect fit for this job. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that brings us to agenda item 19, which is future agenda items. Are there any agenda items requested for future meetings? Okay, seeing none, that will bring us to 20, which is non-public sessions we have done. Uh, last is agenda item 21, adjournment. Council Councilor uh, Vincent moves that the city council stand in adjournment until the next regularly scheduled meeting, seconded by Councilor Parity Catton Zero. Question for the council is adjournment. If you're in favor, you'll state by saying aye. If you're opposed, you'll state by saying no. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? All right, we stand in adjournment. Thank you. Beep.